Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts. My name is Kay and we're going to be continuing to explore maps this week. This week we're going to explore something called relationships and scale. These are kind of big and important ideas when it comes to maps because if you think of what a map does, and I have a road map of what is colonially known as Vancouver right now, is that we know the relationship of how far away one place is from another when we use a map. So for example, if I lived, say, right here, and Art Starts is where? Uh, Richards, 808 Richards, there we go. So there's Art Starts and schools in downtown Vancouver. And so now I know the relative distance of how far it takes for me to get to my house, which I think was right around here, to get to Art Starts. But it's not as easy as my finger just walking over to Art Starts. I need to actually walk real streets in real life. So when I look at this map, I need the map to tell me how long it's going to take or how many kilometers it's going to take for me to get there. If I don't know how to read it, I need to know more about the relationship between these two points. Besides what I'm drawing with my finger right now, this space here on my map is around 13 centimeters or five inches. It's not going to take me 13 centimeters to get from here to Art Starts. 13 centimeters is barely a step for me. So I need to understand the relationship between real life and this map. I need to know more about scale. I need to know how I can blow this up or make this map bigger so that this is the same size as real life. And that's what we're doing when we explore scale. It's about how much smaller this picture is compared to the very big city that is so-called Vancouver. How did they make it this small and it still be right? So today, we're going to explore relationships and scale so that we can better understand what maps are trying to say when they have such small little pictures. I'm going to move all of this aside. 
If you want to follow along with me today, you can just watch with your family or with whoever you're making with today. It's totally okay to just watch. But if you want to make with me, do you have any mark making tools? A mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. Pencil, markers, crayons. Do you have any paper? Any kind of paper. Recycled paper, scrap paper. I've got a nice pile right here. And then something to map. You could map where you're making. You could map your park nearby. You could map your toy area. You could uh, put your toys around the space and then you could map your space with your toys. You could make a drawing, make your own map of a fantasy place. I already made my own map and I have it ready to go. The last thing we'll probably need is a measuring tool. I have a straight ruler that is made out of metal and one side has metric, so centimeters and millimeters, and the other side has inches and quarter inches and smaller sizes of inches. So uh, this metal ruler, oh, and it has some cork falling apart on the other side. Oh, I can put that to the side and I have a tape measure. The tape measure does the same thing as my ruler. It measures both in centimeters and millimeters, but it can go much, much further than my little 38 centimeter or 15 inch ruler. So I have a few options here, but if you don't have anything that can take a measurement, you could also take a piece of string or shoelace. String is a great tool to use for measuring because you can use it to measure around things that are harder for a ruler to get to because you then have to move the object. It lets me measure all around where I would need to walk or go, and then I can pick up my string and measure that, or just use that piece of string and mark it and use that to measure all of the things I want to measure. It means it's the length of my piece of string. Something we're going to be exploring today is relationships. So if you have a relationship with a toy, then why don't you use that as your measuring tool? Why is a string any different than say your teddy bear? I have an old camera here. It's called a Kodak Instamatic. They don't even make film for this regularly anymore. So it's basically a toy that I keep in my art making area. What I could do today is use this camera so that everything that I measure is measured by the length or height of my camera. I don't need to know what that is in centimeters or inches. For example, I wanted to measure this purple sticky. It says relationships and scale on it. I'll bring my camera up beside it, beside one edge or on top of it and measure how long they are relative or in comparison to each other. How long is one compared to how long is the other? My sticky is mm, longer by maybe a couple of centimeters, but if I don't want to talk in centimeters, I could say this sticky is the full length of my camera and a little bit. It's not half of the camera. It's not a quarter of the camera. Maybe it's an eighth if I wanted to put numbers or I understood fractions, but it's also okay to just say it's my camera in a little bit, and that's how I'm going to measure things. Through our explorations, I'll show you a little bit more of what I mean. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to move a couple of things out of the way. When I was starting to get set up today, I decided to draw my own map of my making space. My making space already is on top of a green cutting mat that has a grid. And so I decided I would just trace the exact grid that is on my green cutting mat onto my white piece of paper. I measured that it was 18 squares along one length and 12 squares along the other. I could have used a gridded piece of paper, but I wanted to draw my own map. When I was done, I measured the squares on my art table or cutting mat 
and then I measured the squares that I had drawn on my grid. It happened to work out that one of the squares that was in my main space or real space or on my cutting mat was five centimeters by five centimeters. And the squares that I'd drawn in my grid were one centimeter by one centimeter. Now that I had a grid, I was able to start counting around my space to figure out where things were in relation to each other on my grid. Check out what I did. <laughs> 